Well, we're going to attempt to do some predictions for 2016. Um, actually, some various predictions. Not only, I don't want to give an exact price point on a price of silver. That would be really pretty difficult to do something like that because they don't call it the devil's medal for nothing. And I have done some predictions on that where I thought the price silver prices would be a lot higher by now, but they haven't happened already. But one thing uh, we can count on, which I already do know, that's um, is a fact that there's going to be a very crummy uh, fourth quarter earnings season for 2015. It already looks like that. I mean, it's you know the, the numbers are practically in. And so, what that's going to reflect, and what how that's all going to reflect later, is when the uh, quarterly reports come out and the end of the year reports come out uh, for 2015, which will reflect on the equity stock market so it should now actually that should have happened last year and it did somewhat happen last year too um normally when we had in 2015 it started out pretty slow um it actually started out pretty bad usually these markets end lower toward at the end of the year and yeah that did that has had in fact happened it did not happen where it was catastrophic but, you know, last year in 2015, the, uh, you know, we're, so we're doing the crystal ball predictions here. We got our hands over the world. Um, so, you know, it did, actually did happen. Uh, the, in other words, the year started out pretty lousy. We had lousy retail sales in the fourth quarter of 2014. Now, 2015, it's even worse. Now, something else that has occurred besides is that the oil prices have greatly uh, got knocked down, and um, as a matter of fact, you know, that's what happened at, at the end of 2014. Now, that's a major portion of the economy, actually, uh, oil and all its corollary industries. So now they're expecting even lower oil prices. That, I'm going to tell you, I would not totally rely on that. Usually when somebody, usually when everybody gets I keep smiling. <laughs> I don't want to put too much doom and gloom out here, but let me put it this way. Usually when people get too lopsided one way, there's a change ready to happen. You see, right now, all the predictions, and, you know, I don't really trust Goldman Sachs. You know, they're talking about oil going down to possibly $20 a barrel. Well, you know what? The demand was never there even before when the oil was $100 a barrel. You know, before they were saying, well, the reason it's up $100 a barrel, you know, a few years ago or a couple of years ago is because of, oh, there are tensions in the Middle East. Well, there's more tensions in the Middle East. You know, I already know what the deal is. The game is actually pretty much, it is rigged. I mean, they got major lawsuits going on for the last 15 years, and, you know, they're not going anywhere about the oil industry and all the uh, metals industries, metal, metal price fixing. Um, that's going on in the commodities markets, even brought by the former head of the NYMEX. I mean, he's, it, it's like, you know, they're not going to freaking win these lawsuits. I mean, it's been going on for a long period of time. But I think there's major changes coming in. Uh, and, you know, it's just a matter of uh, waiting for these changes to happen. Um takes a lot longer than I think, and now one of the only ways, safe ways to wait it out is not through uh, leverage funds or through uh, even electronic funds, but through physical assets. And that is really why, you know, even if you bought coins at the wrong price, now a person never said to buy them at 35, 40, 30, you know, I was starting to say to get them at the mid-20s, 24, 25, was thinking they were good, good then. You know, that turned out to be bad, but, you know, I, when I looked at 48 and I see 24, you know, one time it was 48, and people telling you to buy. I wasn't telling everybody to buy it in, you know. But I said I was hoping it was going to go higher, but I didn't think it was going to. I did not tell. I was not buying any over 30. I know that. I wasn't even buying stuff over 20. <laughs> uh, very, very, very little over 20. Um, but, you know, my hope is that it goes up a hell of a lot more and breaks through that record over 50. Um, now, I, there's something else coming up, and I had something else where there's writing on a wall for in the Middle East about major problems that are going to be coming up even in Saudi. Now, I notice, you know, this might be the new uh, ISIS Muslim attire. They might get a little more chic, you know, instead of that, uh, you know, the burqa stuff. They might modify it in the future. Just kidding. Um, but, you know, that's one of the things that's going on. There's a lot of tensions in the Middle East due to, like, ISIS and 
problems between the Sunni and the Shiite world. It's always been that way. Now with the Iranian deal that's going on, maybe there's going to be a nuclear arms race. And this is something else I want to really bring up, though, where it's a major change. Since oil prices have dropped a great deal, the Saudis have a hell of a lot less money to you know, spread around. Now, 25% of the money the Saudis get in, they put in on the military. They're not cutting back on the military. What they're cutting back on is what the, you know, how they take care of everybody in the country. Now, the fact that the Saudis take care of everybody in the country and they offer all these benefits for people, that is one of the main reasons that the Saudi regime stays in power. Um, now they're doing more austerity. So maybe the Saudis are going to be in small purple houses. I don't know what's going to happen exactly. But, you know, it just as an example. I'm not, I don't know exactly what the austerity measures are. I don't really care. But I understand that when you, when you have a regime that is in power because they take care of people and they have a lot of oil revenues to do so, and now they have a lot less oil revenues to do so because the oil prices have dropped greatly which I know is there's a lot more to it than just what the Saudis are trying to do with this. I know the Saudis are trying to break the shale oil industry in the United States, but I think it's also with the, in cahoots with the administration in the United States to break America's independence, energy independence, and also to bring down Russia. I think that's going to be one of the things that is going to, to uh, turn out to be where Russia... If they keep going, if we go keep going on this route with the uh, of the commodities where they're freaking getting destroyed in price, Russia is probably going to fall apart. That's been that's one of the things the elites' goals. I do not think that's going to happen, though. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think the elite are going to keep uh, you know the feudal lords in the West are going to be able to have Russia break up due to commodity prices uh, staying down. Uh, there may be more of a resurgence in um, the, the uh, um, you know, the emerging markets, emerging market nations. Actually, even though I'll you know, tell you there's less demand for oil, I quite don't believe all that because there's a lot more middle there's a lot more middle class coming on strong. Not only I know China's having problems with the collapsed real estate and everything. And, and and uh, the building boom, but they still have a stronger middle class coming on. Uh, India has a stronger middle class coming on, and a lot more people are driving cars throughout the world. Um, demand for energy is not really going up in the United States, but globally, demand for energy is still going up. Now, one of the things they're also predicting why energy will not go up is they're predicting global warming. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm laughing about this. You know, I know the first half of this year, or first half of this winter in the East Coast, has been extremely warm, but the West has been extremely cold. They have record snows up in Colorado, Denver, in uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, they've had record blizzards in New Mexico, Texas. I mean, you know, there's been all kinds of crazy stuff going on this winter in the Midwest and more like the West. Um, the Eastern United States is going to experience a much colder winter, uh, the second half of this winter, and that's going to create a much higher demand for oil and fuel oil, heating, and everything else. I mean, that's, you know, when it's cold temperatures, what happens is people use more fuel. There's a lot more cold temperatures in Siberia, not a lot of people there. You really got to get the cold temperatures down where there's a lot of people. The northeast United States is heavily, heavily populated that's going to create more demand for oil and put a demand on the infrastructure for energy. Um, I don't see these prices staying down. Now, I think that um, – now, there's a reason I'm showing this Spooky Central because I want to mention in this video. But I think that Saudi is actually on a way where there's going to be a regime change in Saudi. There's going to be major turmoil. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'll get back to this in a little while, that I think Saudi and Iran are going to get involved in a major conflict at some point in time. It's going to drive oil prices up exponentially, and it's only going to be temporary because we're going to go on to new tech. Now, I'm going to get on to a little more about that 
in a couple minutes, but be, right now what I'm talking about, new tech. I also want to tell you, in 2016, this product has finally hit the marketplace, more or less. At least there's a first uh, production run for uh, a few customers out in the beginning, and luckily, I'm going to be one of the customers on this Spooky Central Plasma Rife machine, and... Uh, in 2016, despite some of the doom and gloom I've had predicted <laughs> already, you know, with some problems, hopefully we'll be able to take charge of our own health in a true way. And um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use this machine to, uh, you know, diagnose, treat people. I'm not a doctor. I'm going to show you, per the instructions, how it works, what it does, what the technical specifications are, you know, to, um, any types of... I'm actually probably going to make a Faraday cage for this too, and because uh, I want this equipment well protected under any circumstance, and um, this is going to be something I'm going to be bringing out in 2016. Because I don't know when I'm going to get this device. It might be a month or two. I'm not sure. I already ordered it. Maybe a couple weeks. I don't know. I'm not sure, but we will. You will be seeing on this channel, you know, about this device, which is supposedly um, the world's best Rife machine that uh, emits. Uh, frequencies via plasma and other methods to uh, kill microbes in a body that could be causing harm to the body in a safe manner. So there's a bright side to every, you know, cloudy, you know, dark and gloomy prediction. This will be the bright side, spooky plasma. That's the silver lining that's on the clouds. At least we could say something pretty sure about this because it does... Yeah, I'll, I'll be get. I'll at least I'm going to show you what's going on with it, and uh, what, and I want to get the word out on this because, uh, come hell or high water, I want to get a lot of information out on this technology, and uh, you know, it's a time where I think that uh, the administration, even the Obama administration, may possibly, since he's got one year left, and this is an outside chance. I thought this guy was going to do this all along. I figured that Obama was, you know, I know he's just a, a puppet, you know, but uh, I figured that we had already been involved in a major conflict in the Middle East uh, for quite some time. But maybe, maybe it might happen during the last year of the Obama administration because it, he, it just wouldn't be on him, you know. It'd be, you know, if the mess starts during his administration, um, he's not going to take any, I mean, eh, so he takes the blame, he's on his way out, you know, I'm a former president, I got protection for life, I got my paycheck, I got this, I got that, blah, 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 you know, I got all the accolades, and, you know, it may happen, it may happen, I've been thinking it's going to happen all this while, but, you know, why would they let that happen, why would it come under another administration, it would be better that, you know, if you're going to pull the plug on war, make it happen, in other words, um, why not have it happen during the Obama administration? Now, if that happens, we have a major conflict in the Middle East. Oil prices are going to go way the hell up. You're going to see silver go way the hell up. This is the one thing. I don't know when the major conflict is going to happen. But I'm already seeing that Saudi looks like they can have internal problems in their country because of they're doing austerity, which means a lot more people that are already dissatisfied with the Saudi regime are going to be more dissatisfied. And, you know, if somebody blows up an oil refinery pipeline inside the country, uh, it wouldn't take much to send up the prices. And, you know, the fact that so much, so many oil rigs have been closed down in the United States, it would send up the prices more. I'm going to tell you what I really think is going to happen with oil and actually the metals. They're going to skyrocket to some unbelievable number and then they're going to come back down. In the case of oil, I think they're going to skyrocket to maybe $200 or more a barrel eventually at one brief moment of time. It might only be, you know, for a couple months. It'll get up there very radically. And what will happen then is that there'll be a mass exodus away from technology that uses oil or fossil fuel, we'll call it fossil fuels, and they'll get away from that, and they'll just be using, uh, like, Tesla technology and Google cars. And on the flip side, where that's bad is that that's going to be, since it's all electronic, they'll have a way to control all your movement and track you everywhere you go on this planet and limit where you go, too. 
So, you know, the age of freedom is going to be over once the age of oil is over. That's the flip side that's that's bad about it. Actually, the oil, um, the um, because all this is tied together with the metals. Silver and oil are not price correlated except when oil goes in an extremely hard bull run. And that is when your silver is going to be worth a lot of money. Pretty much when an oil goes in an extremely hard bull run, major conflict in the Middle East where oil refineries are being shut down, blown up, on fire. That's really when it happens. It's like that's going to be your opportune time to get rid of silver and go into another hard acid. Um, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I think in this country, you know, in the United States, we're, you know, most of the people that have products of the 60s generation, like these two here, <laughs> are now leading the country. And we do not have the fortitude and leadership to uh, lead us through the hard times. Um, that's going to be one of our major problems. And, you know, it's you as an individual are not going to be able to look to the leadership to take care, you know, for them to take care of you. It's you're going to have to take care of yourself. So, you know, one of the things I'm still saying that silver is a very good bet. Uh, it's it's almost crazy that sometimes when silver is going up, $45 an ounce, $48 an ounce, people seem to get, can't get enough of it. But when it's down to like $14 an ounce, nobody wants it. Because <laughs> they've been watching, you know, they've been watching it go down. And they're like, you know, if people are expecting eight dollars, ten dollars, I don't know. You know, but there's going to be a limit, and when it turns around, it's going to be like you know, whatever is history is history. But you're safest with just physical. That's the thing. But the road that we're taking today is actually, um, you know, as far as the government's decisions going in the big wigs, they're basically taking us down a trail whereby the United States is going to be diminished in manufacturing capability and in independence of materials and in wealth, whereby we're, they're trying to create a world where everybody's interdependent and poor, and if they're just the elite running the deal. Uh, I think we can actually sidestep a lot of this because sometimes um, when you have technology, you can actually use it to your advantage to be totally independent. Like that spooky device I showed was, is something I think is excellent because in many cases... That has the potential to keep you healthy uh, without the big medical expense. And also, there's going to be other technology out that's going to be coming out from, like, Bedini, for instance. Like, I showed these uh, Bedini battery chargers, but there's going to be some stuff coming out later on that involves uh, charging batteries with solar energy. And one of the problems you have with solar energy is the batteries. That's really the expense. Um, they wear out. They have to be constantly replaced. Um, you know, you can't run them down too hard and all this kind of stuff or else you destroy the batteries. But there's some new technology coming out through Bedini that you can use solar power for uh, charging batteries in a much more efficient manner whereby the batteries can be discharged more and um, basically uh, you can go ahead and um, get more life out of those batteries, which make the yeah, solar power more economically feasible. So actually, you know, if you look to the government for the answers, you're not going to get the answers. If you look to yourself for the answers, and I'm going to try to put out a lot of good information on this channel coming up in 2016, especially about that. Well, I know I, I don't know about, I have some of the Bedini if, uh, devices I've put some videos out on, but I don't have the solar stuff. That's not out just yet. But I will be putting out stuff on that spooky thing and uh, the spooky plasma rife machine and we shall uh, see you know how it works i'm not gonna be able to give you any I'm not gonna be able to show you any demonstrations on cancer patients or anything like that i'm not a doctor but i will show you how the device uh, works in theory and um you know i look i look at it like this you know the governments may all collapse but it does not necessarily mean that we will have a major problem in this nation as long as we think independent. And, uh, you know, look on the bright side. We you know maybe it'll bring back mini skirts and get rid of the burkas, right? So we can always pass out, uh, bring back the mini for 2016. And, um, you know, to hell with uh, <laughs> all of the garbage that's going on today. So I, I, I have to say this, though. You know, 
What actually brought the country down in the first place is a lot of this stuff from the 60s. You know, the lone wolf here is every communist is a fink. We pretty much got a bunch of damn communists running the show in, in, in Congress today, with the exception of somebody like Ted Cruz. Now, Ted Cruz would be great, you know. But, you know, <clears throat> the problem is that we got <clears throat> is ingrained from, you know, the people being dumbed down, the people being lethargic, the people being used to turn into the government to fix the problems. And that is really, until all that changes and people get that old American spirit of independence, fortitude, they can they don't even want help. They want to do the things on their own all the way. They don't want to listen to orders from people that you have to do it this way. You want to make your own <coughs> way. <coughs> you know, it's like when people have that type of attitude where they have that um, pioneer frontiersman type attitude, you know, in a modern way. So anyway, will we see in a major market reset this uh, in 2016? That is a very distinct possibility because um, we, we have seen a number of signs globally that show the economy stinks. I mean, not just, you know, by saying it stinks, but it's the Baltic Dry Index, which shows the number of shipping that goes on throughout the world. There's been a total implosion in uh, Chinese real estate market, too. That's another thing that's, you know, since they're a major part of the global economy. Um, <clears throat> if energy prices go up uh, during 2016, uh, yeah, you'll see silver and gold go up more than likely. But at the same time, it'll totally destroy the retail sector market. Now, actually, the type of products I'm going to be telling you about on this vid on some of my videos are not going to be uh, well stuff I have any financial connection to because I'm actually going to tell you a lot of different tips on this channel on how to save money. But um, I'm going to steer people away from uh, buying fluff and garbage. And uh, if you buy the actual essentials that you actually need. Um, <clears throat> and that you can actually do something with and create something with, you're gonna you're gonna be able to survive any any type of problem that comes up in the United States. Uh, I know the Deagle.com site um, talks about the U.S. population going from 313 million to 64.9 million by 2025 over the next 10 years. Yeah, maybe that doesn't mean it's going to happen in 2016, but, you know, we could be already be starting to see some of the... I don't know if that's going to happen that extreme, but they got some really extreme uh, problems uh, predicted for the future. Um, and what I see is could possibly happen, though, is that the government at one point in time is going to have to stop or cut back on a lot of its payments where it's supporting citizens, and there's going to be a lot of civil unrest. And with that civil unrest, there's going to be, you know, crackdowns. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to actually diverge on a couple things on this video besides that to just tell you a couple things. Uh, you know, <clears throat> during the uh, 1930s, you know, a lot of people like today are talking about, uh, you know, there's a, a, a Nazi coup or something coming up today or something. You know, you hear this a lot on the alternative media, like Alex Jones always talking about. Yeah, they're they're out there to get you. And st I know it's partly true. I'm not saying it's not true, but you know this almost happened during the time of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Actually, it was John D. Rockefeller and, and J. P. Morgan was uh, some of the conspirators. They wanted to actually uh, uh, have a coup against uh, FDR and institute a fascist government in the United States. And you know what happened during that time? Um, <clears throat> it was General Smedley. Smedley Butler, the Marine Corps General, com former Commandant of the Marine Corps, they tried to get him in on a deal. They wanted him to uh, use the <clears throat> World War One veterans to uh, rebel and use them as a force to uh, overthrow the government so they can install a fascist government. Well, it he, he turned out that Smedley Butler just blew the lid off the whole, whole deal. Um, you know, I can tell you that even though I think there's a lot of Ass wipes in the military, the higher up you go, there are people in the military that could throw a curveball in a lot of elite plants. You don't know. There could be. I wouldn't totally count on it, but there could be. And, uh, 
You know, we we have gotten through situations before where, you know, things almost really went for a bad turn in the United States, and we've gotten through them, and we 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 held back the bad guys. Now, the one problem I could tell you today, though, with the electoral process between Democrat and Republican, is that, especially at the and, you know the presidential level. Uh, you almost got no choice. Uh, when you're talking about the re- Democratic Party, you're almost talking like, uh, you know, the, the Communist Party, the Socialist Communist Party. When you're talking about the Republican Party, you're almost talking like the Fascist Nazi Party. You know, therefore, you got some other groups that came about, like the Libertarians and the Tea Party people and stuff. And, you know, even Bernie Sanders looks freaking like a saint compared to Hillary Clinton, you know, and that and when you're talking about the other end of the spectrum. But, uh, you know, the thing is that when, when people are, you know, they have no choice, that's really 90% of the problem. And I also want to state this, you know, I know a lot of times um, I've seen this, a lot of remarks on my channel about, uh, you know, Jews... Uh, politically being a little more to the left or not being in with the Republican group. Well, I can tell you one thing. You know, one of the big problems with the Republican Party, i got to put it out here because i got to just throw this out here so people have a, look, a little more understanding of, and not be so anti-Jewish or anti-whatever you want to say, Semitic or whatever. You know, one of the problems with the freaking damn Republican Party um is that it's been taken over in some areas by, I'd say, fascist Nazis, like with uh, the Bush camp. Prescott Bush was a definite freaking co-conspirator with the elite group group of people in the West that were um, tied in with Nazis. And, you know, Prescott Bush was the father of Herbert Walker Bush, and he's the grandfather of George Bush, right? And he's the grandfather of Jeb Bush. Uh, you know... If I was Jewish, I, you know, I don't like Bushes. I don't, I, I'm not voting for Jeb Bush no matter what. But I can tell you one thing. I, if I was Jewish, uh, I'd look at the, you know, the Republican Party with all the Bush connections, and I'd say to myself, you know, anybody but them. Because they were attached to the Nazis and, you know, I.G. Farben and Auschwitz and all that other stuff. So, I mean, you know, it's not like... You know, sometimes these people on YouTube are constantly saying, eh, these Jewish people are not conservative. They, they are conservative, man. It's like, you know, you can't freaking... It's just that the Republican Party's got too many Nazi elements in it. And so, you you know, when you're taking... You know, when you're looking at it from... I, I don't know, I shouldn't even diverge down this trail, but I should because I think a lot of people aren't getting it. You know, um, I personally can't go with a freaking Bush candidate, no matter what, you know, for that reason. And, you know, that's 90% of the problems we got in the United States because um, the presidency should be weakened greatly to fix a lot of our problems. We need to actually have the Congress restore its powers that were in the the Constitution so it goes back to local government. Um, You know, social programs aren't really a bad thing at all. I'm not really a social, I'm not a socialist or a communist, but... I realize social programs do have, there's an absolute need for a lot of these things because sometimes people just need help, you know. Um, I'm not for this, you know, hey, the, the, the too bigs to fail are going to give all the jobs to people and the 1% hire everybody. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know like the, the totalitarian dictators also and the, and the guys that built the pyramids, they had all their slaves to do their work too. I mean, come on, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, bullshit involved in both sides of these political arguments, but I have to state that, you know, when people are too involved in, you know, looking at the presidency or politics or the government for answers, they need to not look at that shit so much and not look at what other people are doing so much and just look at what they are doing. Um, you know, I'm showing a little purple house here. Actually, anybody, everybody out there pretty much is capable of building this little purple house on their own. I mean, if you got no place to live and you're homeless, I mean, you can freaking steal or grab what steal, whatever, 
find the wood someplace <laughs> for pallets or something to make your own place. And, you know, it's a matter of um, that entrepreneur spirit, that frontiersman uh, can-do attitude. Everybody today is looking to the government, and actually that's 90% of the problem. And the government is definitely going to be broke in the near future. It might only be two or three down years down the road. And that is probably why this Deagle.com prediction is going to be accurate, whereby, um, you know, uh, the thing is where people are going to be looking for help and they're not going to get it. You need to help yourself. And, you know, one of the things I've been harping on, too, besides silver, is... Uh, you know, the food, the fuel, the firepower, and, you know, your tools and things like that, besides just having silver coins as a hedge. Because silver coins are not going to be the be-all, end-all of any answer in a catastrophic problem. Uh, I do, do think that 2016 is going to show up a lot more problems in the past. Obama has uh, actually, what the hell has he done just recently? He's got been... Uh, um, work permits to all the illegal aliens or some shit just, just the last couple of days. That's not going to help out the employment prospect of a lot of Americans. Um, I don't know what Obama's going to do during his last year. He Maybe, like I said, man, he might actually get involved in the Middle East war now because, you know, he's out. He's out. I, you know, he's, he's not a guy that makes his own decisions. They're telling him what to do. I think they're gearing up for a big, big freaking problem in the Middle East. And it's deliberately being set up that way through the policies that Obama's been told to pursue. And when that happens, you're going to see a price explosion in commodities, oil, silver, the whole nine yards. Uh, it may not happen this year, but personally, I would hope that it doesn't happen too bad. Because if it does happen that bad, we're going to have a lot of civil tensions and civil strife. But I look at that Deagle.com site again, and I say to myself, you know, these are not conspiracy people that put out these predictions about a greatly reduced population and a greatly reduced military expenditure and a greatly reduced GDP in the United States. These are very experienced military people putting out these predictions. And it may happen. It might not happen this year. But you're going to see more trends coming that way that are going to be like that. And, of course, the alternative media is going to be famine the flames of fear and, you know, panic and all this other shit. I am not going to do that. I am going to be telling you real concrete solutions of even simple stuff, what to pursue. And, you know, one of the things I'm going to be getting on here pretty soon, hopefully, is on that Spooky 2 Rife machine. It may be going into a much bigger production run, run after this initial production run. Um, and, you know, if you get, you know, if, if it looks like it's doing a very good job, it could be a shared cost between a certain, you know, group of people. It could be, you know, you know, a club, a church, or a community, or whatever. And that alone could probably, you know, save your butt in a, a situation where maybe the health care system cannot help you in some ways because, you know, and that's going to be another problem because a lot of people are not going to be able to afford health care because of the stupid Affordable Health Care Act, you know. And uh, I, I, I see what's – I already said what I think is coming up for the 2016 election. I hope I'm wrong. Man, I hope I'm wrong on that shit. I think Trump is going to run on the independent and it's going to cost Hillary to win. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, I swear to God, I do hope I'm wrong on that, man. I'm not trying to freaking make that a, a, a wish. But, uh, you know, the, the earnings are going to look terrible this year. It's probably going to, you know, not only retail earnings, but also the oil market earnings. And... All that's going to show up in the quarterly reports and the end of the year reports. And when those reports come out, it's going to bring down the stock markets and equities quite a bit in January 2016. Even the major media is predicting that quite a bit. How much is down? I don't know. I don't know. I think that the Federal Reserve policies right now have been the thing that's actually been driving the stock markets. The stock markets is where the bubble has occurred due to Federal Fed, Federal Reserve policy. And I hate making a prediction like that ahead of time, but I would not be a bit surprised if the stock markets got went all the way down to below 10000 before they start going back up again. And it might take them 10 years for them to go up again. 
So, you know, that's not the place to be. So if you're in silver and you're in commodities, it looks terrible right now. It's probably the place to be. And hopefully everybody will have a really good year this year. And uh, But, you know, as it is, that's not the be-all, end-all of any everything. Like I said, health is way more important than wealth.